Good evening everyone and welcome back to the channel. Tonight what we're talking about is the 392 Hemi Jeep that Jeep released just moments after Ford debuted the 2021 Ford Bronco. So I have all the information that I've been able to gather about the 392, all the specs, is it a real concept, and when we can expect to see it. Stay tuned if you want to hear the rest. Now we all know the 392 from Jeep put into the Jeep Wrangler is going to be a monster. We also know that Ford came out swinging this week when they released all the new versions of the Ford Bronco. Now if you go through all of those versions and there's seven of them there's only a couple that truly fit the bill to go against the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. So what Jeep did right after that was announce that the 392 concept is possibly real. But is that enough to keep people like myself and other people that are not necessarily Jeep guys from going and purchasing a Bronco and taking the opportunity off the table for Jeep? Well, that I, def I definitely can't answer. What I can answer from my perspective is that I will not be buying a 2021 Ford Bronco. I have a list of reasons why. If you'd like to know my reasons why, put it in the comments and I'll shoot it over to you guys. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like these. And let's dig into the new Hemi Jeep that everyone has been so patiently waiting for. Now, just the, just the motor itself is a 392 cubic inch motor from Jeep produced for more than likely the um, Trailhawks and some of the other SRT models that the Chrysler brand has in their portfolio. Now, that motor produces 450 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque. If anybody's familiar with a Jeep like I am, getting on a Jeep when you're getting onto the highway and slamming that gas pedal to try to get in front of an oncoming semi, it's not a good idea. So with this motor, you will be able to get up and go and get out of the way. Now, a lot of manufacturers or aftermarket companies have already been producing these Hemi modifications for Wranglers and Gladiators. So I think what Jeep is doing is they've started to notice, hey listen, these guys are already doing these motor swaps. They're paying an extreme premium for that motor swap. The drivetrain's not right. The engine mounting brackets aren't right. You're gonna have to do a lot of modifications to an already stock Wrangler or Rubicon or Gladiator to get it to accept and harness that kind of power. So now what Jeep has done is they are starting to toy with the, seriously toy with the idea of dropping these motors in a factory ready vehicle. What that means for guys like you and I is we can buy this vehicle off the lot with a warranty, with a lift, with 37 inch tires, and we don't have to worry about anything if it breaks. And that for me is a big deal. I have thought long and hard about doing a Hemi swap in our JL Rubicon. It's a lot of money, so that is obviously the first hurdle. But second, secondly, I don't know if that Jeep would hold that motor properly. I don't know the mechanics behind making that drivetrain and making everything work with a new Hemi swap. So them engineering it and coming out with it from the factory is going to be a game changer. And there's nothing else on the market that's going to be like it. Even if Ford decided to tune that 2.7 liter um, EcoBoost V6 that they have in the Wild Track in the first edition Broncos that are going to be coming out, 
they can only tune them so far. Now, they also use that same motor in the Ford Raptor, and I'm fairly certain they use that same motor in some of the Mustangs. So I know they know how to tune it, and I know they know how to make it fast, but it's not a Hemi, it's not a V8. And for a lot of old school car enthusiasts like myself, we want a V8 in our cars, and that's just the way it is. So whether that's right or wrong, that's just how we feel about it. Now, from the factory, it's gonna come with 373 gears, and it's gonna come with 37 inch Falcon Wild Peak mud terrains. Now, 95% of Jeep owners at some point will consider upping their tire size um, and putting different wheels on their vehicle, whether it's bead locks or non-beads, whatever that is. What Jeep is noticing is that they can keep a lot of that aftermarket money spend in the Mopar line if they offer this stuff from the factory. I, for one, would absolutely love to buy a Hemi Jeep with 37s, optional beads, and a lift straight from the factory. Well, guess what? That's what they're proposing to do. Now, with those 37s, you know you're going to need a little bit more lift. So what Jeep is doing is they're doing a two inch Mopar lift with Fox monotube shocks. Those are the concepts and the prototypes that have been built so far, and that's how it would come from the factory as it sits today. Now, these Jeeps, zero to 60 in five seconds or less. That's fast. I mean, you're in a Jeep. First of all, I don't even know if that's safe to go that fast in a Jeep, but get, I'll take some. That's what I need, right? That's what everyone needs is a little bit of zero to 60 in under five seconds in their Jeep with their doors off, top off, blazing down the highway. But that's a personal opinion. So that's going to provide Jeep a platform that nobody else has, nobody else can compete with, and the fact that they released this information on the same day of the Bronco tells me they're feeling the pressure. And I think a lot of the reasons we didn't get any upgrades or some of the promises or the expectations that we had from Jeep in the past is there was no reason to do it. They were producing these vehicles, they're selling them like hotcakes, what's the point of digging into their bag of tricks just to do it. Now there is because there's competition in the market and that's what we needed to keep this sport evolving. Now, 17 inch beadlock optional wheels straight from the factory. That's a huge deal. Obviously everyone changes their wheels and tires. Um, some choose to run beads. I don't run beads personally. I, I, I would, I just don't. Um, I never really take my tires down that low. But that, that's once again, that's a preference for everyone. So having that 17 inch beadlock optional wheel from the factory, great job Jeep. Now, this is where it gets interesting because Ford was boasting about their approach angle, their water fording, their departure angle and their clearance um, in their debut of the Bronco. Now, the approach angle for the Hemi Jeep is looking like 51.6 degrees, breakover angle is 29 and a half degrees, departure angle 40.1 degrees, and 13.3 inches of ground clearance. Now, I believe the Bronco has 11.6 of ground clearance. It comes factory with 35s um, and an optional beadlock wheel. That's with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. Now you're going to, going to be able to get another nearly two inches of ground clearance, another two inches of tire, and a whole lot more power. The price point, nobody knows that yet. I don't have any information on that yet whatsoever. But I'm sure it's going to be more expensive than the Wrangler Rubicons. Um, more expensive than the Gladiators. You can assume between eight and 10,000 more on the MSRP value of those current models. Now, the water fording increases from 31 and a half inches to 34 inches. That's a lot of water. I don't wanna be in that deep of water unless I absolutely have to be, but to have that type of capability fresh from the factory, completely warrantied, I mean, that's, that's an off-roader or an overlander's dream. Now, the steering wheel in the 2021 Hemi Jeep is going to be very similar to the steering wheel in the Gladiator Mojave. Now, that steering wheel is more of a race-inspired steering wheel. It's a little bit thicker. It's got thumb handles that are a little bit more prominent, um, which is a super cool feature because anybody who drives a sports car, it usually has a really nice 
thick steering wheel made of leather, um, and it just feels good to your hands. So that's going to be a big plus and a big upgrade for the Jeep. It doesn't necessarily mean anything in the way that it drives or how it handles, but it's nice to know that you're paying for something and, and you're getting something in return. Now, there's a 2021 possible release date. And from the information that I've been able to gather, um, as you know, we live in Ohio, and as you may or may not know, Jeep is mostly manufactured in Ohio. So what I've been able to find out is that they have produced north of 30 of these concept Hemi Wranglers, okay? Typically a concept car doesn't make it past three or four concept models because it's more of a showpiece. Um, it's not something that people are going to be going after and they're not even intending to sell it. When you start making and producing north of 30 of these concept vehicles, well, that's when you start dancing into the realm of this is a real possibility. So we can expect an answer on this, I would say before Bronco releases the 2021 Ford Broncos. Before they actually hit the production line, we'll know if we're gonna get this. But all signs are indicating towards an absolute yes. Because they have now have competition and they cannot let Ford come in and rain on their multi-decade parade that they've had going. So, that's the information that I have so far on the 2021 Hemi Jeep Wrangler 392. If you guys like this video, feel free to give this video a like. If you have any questions that I didn't answer or anything that you'd like for me to try to go dig up, leave that in the comments and we'll get back with you as soon as we have some more information. All right, thanks guys.